In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We come together as God's family on this most sacred of nights, beginning the observance of the sacred triduum. And now, my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to oh, Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. O oh God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love, Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, On the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, and then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it, with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand, you shall eat like those who are in the flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night, I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For 
he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, on this Holy Thursday, we are blessed to have a deacon with us, Deacon Angel Cuesta, who's stationed at St. Madeline's Parish. And it would be nice to have a deacon at every single Mass. Be very nice. <laughs> My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, the Israelites would ask a ceremonious question on the night of the Passover. What makes this night different? from all other nights. And we need to ask ourselves the same question. What makes this night different from every other night? You could say we could begin to answer that question by reflecting on what just took, took place a few minutes ago with the singing of the Gloria and the ringing of the bells. That's first very different when do we find ourselves at Mass on a weekday night singing the Gloria with bells ringing? It signals something very different. It signals this, that we're joyful tonight because our Lenten penance has come to an end. We're joyful tonight because we celebrate the institution of two sacraments, the sacrament of holy orders, priesthood, and the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. We're joyful tonight because we enter into the sacred mysteries, that is, the death and resurrection of Jesus. And we're joyful not just because we celebrate those mysteries, but we truly believe that by celebrating them with interior devotion, we can feel the effects of the mysteries that we begin to celebrate tonight. But also think of the ringing of those bells that we just heard, like a school bell, summoning you and I to a classroom, a classroom that you and I will remain in now, not just for an hour, not just for a couple hours, but all the way until Easter Sunday night. We're at class. And you will notice that at the end of this Mass, we're not dismissed, we're not blessed, and we're not told the Mass is ended, go in peace. No, we're not dismissed until Easter night. And so, who is our teacher now for the next three days? It's Jesus Christ. He is our model. And he has a lot to teach us now over the course of the next three days. And even though he's got a lot to teach us, I would just like to focus on three things that he begins to teach us tonight. And in the Gospel this evening, he even referred to himself as our teacher and as our model. Remember what he said. Can you imagine, after Jesus washed the feet of the disciples, the apostles, and after he sat down, took that apron off and sat down to finish the job of washing their feet. Imagine the twelve. Their eyes must have been riveted on him, thinking to themselves, I can't believe what he just did. 
Why did he do that? And so the first lesson that he's going to teach us tonight is how to love. And love demands service. And so after he sat back down, he says this, do you realize what I've done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I therefore the master and teacher have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. He's teaching us that love, real love, demands service. So how do you and I respond to this first lesson? Well, tonight, we should ask ourselves, who has God placed into my life that he has called me to serve? And there is not one of us in this church tonight that God has not placed someone in their life that we must wash their feet even if we find ourselves living all alone. There is someone that God has placed in our life that we are called to serve. And so tonight, let's ask the Holy Spirit to help us truly know who that is so that we can serve them as much as we wish to serve Jesus Christ. The second lesson that he teaches us tonight is this is that love is self-giving. That love gives itself away completely. That love is self-sacrificial. Love is not sentimental. Love is not about the emotions. But love is quite literally giving oneself away for the good of the other. And so how does he teach us that tonight? Well, in the second reading, St. Paul reminds us of what Jesus did at the Last Supper table. St. Paul said, I received from the Lord. Isn't that interesting? He doesn't say, I received from the apostles. He says, I received directly from the Lord. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was handed over, took bread, blessed it, broke it and said, this is my body. The same with the wine. This is my blood. Jesus at the Last Supper table gave himself to us. He held nothing back. His complete self, body, blood, soul, and divinity. So how do you and I respond to this lesson of sacrificial love? Well, let's ask ourselves tonight what kind of faith do we have in what the church teaches about the Holy Eucharist? What does the church teach about the Holy Eucharist? It tells us that this beautiful sacrament is a sacrament in three different ways. That the Holy Eucharist makes present for us every time we come together as God's people. That the Holy Eucharist makes present the sacrifice of Jesus not a different sacrifice, not a sacrifice where he is sacrificed over and over and over again, something much more sublime. It is the one sacrifice completed over 2,000 years ago, made present for you and I, so that we can enter into it. The sacrifice of Calvary is made present on the Holy Altar. We believe that this most blessed sacrament is also a sacrament of food for the journey, that it is truly Christ Jesus who feeds us so that we can love in the manner in which he expects us to love. And finally, this one sacrament is a sacrament of ongoing presence, that he remains in the sacred species when you and I leave the Father's house. He stays with us. This is how he fulfills completely the last promise that he made on Ascension Thursday. Behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. He's not with us as a disembodied spirit. He's with us completely. 
body, blood, and soul and divinity. So how has our faith been towards this most august sacrament? Has our love grown cold toward Jesus in the universe? Has our faith grown weak? Has our reverence and our adoration kind of grown cold? And then finally, the last lesson that he will teach us tonight is that love is fueled by the virtues of obedience and humility. And you know, the roots of pride are so deep in us, in me, that when we hear, even just hear the words obedience and humility, our nature shrivels. We don't like those virtues, obedience and humility, but they fuel genuine love. And so Jesus begins to teach us tonight that his sacrifice was done in complete obedience to the Father and in humility. Remember what St. Paul said in the letter to the Philippians. Although he was in the form of God, he did not deem equality with God as something to be grasped at. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, and he humbled himself, being obedient even unto death. That's our Savior. So how do we respond to this lesson of humility and obedience? Well, he's going to invite his apostles to watch. When he leaves the upper room and goes into the Garden of Gethsemane to enter into his passion, he tells them, watch. Watch what? Watch for the guards? No, watch him. Watch him how he suffers, and watch him how he is obedient and humble. And so tonight, we'll do exactly that. When we receive communion, the Mass will not be ended. But we will accompany Jesus, the Blessed Sacrament, into the garden through the symbolism of a procession. And we'll come back and place him in the repository where we're asked to keep watch. So tonight, how do we make tonight different? There are a number of ways to keep watch before Jesus in the Eucharist for some time in quiet adoration, to maintain a spirit of reflection, recollection, and quiet throughout this night, not to go back home and put the TV on, the radio on, recollection and silence. How can we turn to the TV or the radio or the phone when we know what Jesus is doing for us? We could also pray the Sorrowful Mysteries tonight, and we could also read John's Gospel, chapters 14, 15, 16, and 17. You know what those chapters are in the Gospel of John, 14, 15, 16, and 17? It's his conversation at the Last Supper table. And he had a lot to say tonight after he celebrated the Eucharist. He had much to say. Isn't that interesting? After the celebration of the Eucharist, he really opens up his heart to them and teaches them some very profound truths. Go to those chapters and see what he had to say tonight. Because tonight it has to be different. So for all of these reasons, that is why tonight is different from every other night. Also, before we enter into the Eucharist of prayer tonight, you know our bishop yesterday he blessed the sacramental oils that are used for a number of the sacraments. And so those oils will be presented to us um, following that. Praise be Jesus in the blessed sacrament, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Bishop Felipe Estevez blessed the holy oils at the Chrism Mass this past Wednesday at the Cathedral. These holy oils will be used throughout the year to strengthen our sick, to anoint those to be baptized, and to seal our brothers and sisters with the Holy Spirit by confirmation. In receiving these oils, we are united with our Bishop in continuing healing action of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Behold the oil of the sick, blessed at the Cathedral Church by our Bishop Felipe, and sent to us for the anointing of all those who are suffer illness or are in danger of death. Behold the oil of the sick, blessed at, I'm sorry, at the oil of the catechumens, blessed at the cathedral church by our Bishop Felipe, and sent to us for anointing of catechumens on this Saturday evening at their baptism at the Easter Vigil. Behold the sacred chrism, oiled mixed with sweet perfume, and consecrated at the Cathedral Church by Bishop Felipe Estevez. Those approaching the Easter sacraments will be anointed with this chrism, and so be sealed with the Holy Spirit. Let us now stand and present our prayers to our Heavenly Father. In thanksgiving for the gift of the Lord's body and blood, and for the grace to worship Him fervently and receive Him worthily, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That the Lord, who gave the church on this night the gift of the priesthood, may bless and strengthen every priest with the gift of deep holiness and pastoral charity. Let us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our gratitude for the gift of the Eucharist from this night may strengthen our solidarity with the poor in danger of starvation, the lonely in danger of despair, and the unborn in danger of abortion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who will receive the Easter sacraments this weekend and for their sponsors and families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for deeper unity among all Christians, an end to divisions and a spirit of forgiveness and collaboration, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are ill may be strengthened and that those who have died may be welcomed into eternal joy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for the Holy Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that our Lord may bestow birthday blessings upon Mary, Lou McLeod, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we make all these prayers with faith in the holy name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacred sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as he is memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as with that end we are played.
whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, where they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, through blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysodius, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all, that is, today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessing, 
blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, for whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with light, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please kneel. Angel lingua gloriosi.
Thank you. 